This Week at NASA. The 36-year-old probe is now sailing the uncharted waters of a new cosmic sea. During a press briefing at NASA headquarters, scientists announced that the Voyager 1 spacecraft has officially left our solar bubble and has reached interstellar space. So we can detect these waves uh, when an oscillation occurs. The interstellar plasma has considerably a higher density than the solar plasma. The Voyager interstellar mission seeks to extend NASA's exploration of the solar system beyond the outer planets to the outer limits of the sun's sphere of influence and possibly beyond. Voyager 1 and its twin Voyager 2 were launched 16 days apart in 1977. The Space 2013 conference in San Diego features a presentation of a paper co-authored by NASA Associate Administrator for Human Exploration and Operations Bill Gerstenmeier that relates past, present, and proposed NASA activities off the Earth to their importance for the Earth. Those activities include research conducted aboard ISS and the future mission to an asteroid, the topic of another discussion at the conference. It's an activity that allows us to expand our skills, to allow us to be ready to go do these huge, challenging tasks beyond low Earth orbit. The Off the Earth, For the Earth theme is from the mission patch of the station's Expedition 34 crew. Thank you very much, Pavel. The traditional change of command ceremony took place on the ISS with Expedition 36 Commander Pavel Vinogradov passing the reins to fellow cosmonaut Fyodor Yurchikin, commander of Expedition 37. A couple of days later, Vinogradov, Chris Cassidy of NASA, and Russian Alexander Mazurkin landed in Kazakhstan after 166 days in space. Yurchikin, NASA's Karen Nyberg, and Luka Parmitano of the European Space Agency will welcome Oleg Kotov and Sergei Rizansky of the Russian Federal Space Agency and Michael Hopkins of NASA to the station in late September. Orbital Sciences Corporation's Cygnus cargo craft is scheduled for a September 22nd arrival at the station based on a September 17th launch aboard the company's Antares rocket from Wallops Flight Facility. The orbital demonstration mission of Antares and Cygnus is part of NASA's Commercial Orbital Transportation Services program to develop viable partnerships to resupply the space station. NASA Associate Administrator for Education Leland Melvin was on hand for rockets to race cars at Richmond International Speedway to help rev up public interest about NASA's missions, STEM education, and the shared science between NASA and the auto racing industry. Melvin also waved the green flag to start the Virginia 529 College Savings 250 NASCAR race that night. The list of possible landing sites for NASA's next mission to touch down on Mars has been narrowed to four. Slated for a September 2016 launch, the InSight mission will land at one of the four sites located in close proximity to each other in the Elysium Planitia region of Mars. InSight will study the red planet's interior rather than surface to better understand the underlying processes that formed and shaped the rocky planets of the inner solar system, including Earth. NASA has launched an official Instagram profile that will take its followers on an out-of-this-world journey through images of Earth and beyond. Featuring aeronautics, astrophysics, Earth science, human spaceflight, and more, NASA Instagram will provide a comprehensive view of the agency by sharing new and historic images and video. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories or to follow us on iTunes, Foursquare, and other social media, log on to www.nasa.gov.